So, um, kind of an interesting take on what fascism is here um, by uh, the author Jonah Goldberg. And let me just kind of be, uh, try and be fair and upfront about this, okay? Uh, fascism can be temporary, okay? Fascism can be permanent, okay? Now, the two most famous fascists that we know about are, of course, Mussolini, who coins the term fascism in the 1920s. Okay, so it's a term that has not been around for centuries. Okay, and then, of course, when most people hear fascism, they immediately go to the guy, Adolf Hitler. Okay, and that's kind of, it's kind of unfair um, that people like to throw around this this term uh, fascism um, left and right using it as an epithet okay and it, it's because immediately if you call somebody fascist they're compared to Hitler okay and that's unfair um, Hitler was an anti-semite he hated Jews his fascism came with not mm -hmm. just a tinge of racism Okay, but was built around the idea of racism. Okay, where Mussolini was not an anti-Semite. He didn't hate Jews. He was a political opportunist. Okay, that sought power. All right, and domination. Uh, he was a thug. And um, so let me just throw this out there at you. Okay, when George W. Bush was president. There were people that liked to call him a fascist, okay? Well, right after 9-11, did the country rally around, I know you guys were really little, did the country rally around the President of the United States in support? I mean, we lost 3,000 Americans. There was a lot of patriotism and pulling together behind the President, okay? So when you look at a definition of fascism, it's hard to really like define and nail down, especially because the two most famous are Mussolini and Hitler, and they're very different, okay? But Goldberg referred to it as this, supercharged nationalistic statism. Now, I've put together four basic characteristics that would kind of mean something was fascist or a movement was fascist, okay? You need a strong leader. And generally, like with Hitler, it was Nazi Germany. It was, he was synonymous with the country. Okay, and for Mussolini, it was the, the black shirts. Okay. The symbol for the Nazis, it was the swastika. Okay. Now, for, after 9-11, the symbol is America, the flag. The crisis is terror. People hijacking our aircraft and using them against civilian targets. That's the crisis. Fascism always includes crisis and action. So that action is going to give power to the executive, to those in authority are going to gain strength and power. So after 9-11, Congress passes the Patriot Act. They pass a new cabinet for the executive branch called Homeland Security. All airport security will no longer be done by the airports, but we have a federal agency called the TSA. So airport security becomes federalized. Okay? The Patriotic, Patriot Act itself, guys, violated basic tenets of the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution. And you guys, we talk about rights that we have. Right to no illegal search and seizure. Well, the Patriot Act guys challenged that. So these are all, this all fits into a temporary fascism during the Bush administration. Let's go to the Civil War. Abraham Lincoln. Okay? We've got a strong leader We've got a symbol, the union. You've got a crisis. 
And what is the action that he takes? Well, he's going to invade the South. He is going to suspend habeas corpus, which is people's rights to be told what they're being charged with. Okay? It has the elements of fascism. Am I calling Abraham Lincoln a fascist? No. I'm not calling George W. Bush a fascist either. During the Trump, or excuse me, during the Obama administration, when he comes into office in 2009, he's elected in 08, takes office in January of 09. We are in the middle of the financial crisis. The banks, there's, there's threat of the major banks going under. General Motors, these other companies going under. If you go back to 2009 and look at Obama's speeches, every other sentence contains the word crisis. It's a crisis. It's an economic crisis. It's a banking crisis. It's a crisis. It's a crisis. So what do we need? We need action. $787 billion for a stimulus package. Obama himself basically fires the CEO of General Motors and appoints the person he wants to run General Motors. Not the shareholders, but the President of the United States. Very similar, okay? Am I calling Obama a fascist? No. Of course not. Okay? Now, has anybody heard called, Trump called a fascist? Of course you have. Now, let's just think about this. Is he uh, a popular, strong leader? Have you seen his poll numbers? <laughs> I mean, he's somewhere between 35 and 45. Now, there is a poll that came out saying he's 48% approval rate. Okay. Did he win the popular vote? No. Okay. Now, you could, I mean, definitely, Trump is a nationalist. Okay. Very much a nationalist. Loves the country, talks about the flag, standing for the flag during the national anthem. He talks about this stuff, right? America first, America first, America first, yes? So he is a nationalist, but that doesn't necessarily make him a fascist. Is there a crisis? Well, some people would view what Trump is saying about immigration. There's a crisis with immigration, okay? So you could use that against Trump in a, calling him a fascist, okay? Has he gained in power over previous presidents, power over immigration or anything else? Is President Obama getting through every piece of legislation he wants? No, not even close. He did get the tax cut, okay? But other than that, there's been very little legislation passed. We've had two government shutdowns now, okay? So what is President uh, Trump doing? He's One of the first things he did with executive orders was deregulation. Not more regulation, which give the executive more power. He's deregulating. He's getting rid of regulations. A fascist would be like, hey, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this, you can do that. We're going to control what you do. He's doing the opposite. In fact, he wants to send powers back to the states, decentralizing government not centralizing government. So it doesn't fit, guys, to call Trump a fascist. You can call him a lot of different things, <laughs> okay? A lot of different things. Come up with the adjectives. I don't care. You know, it doesn't offend me that people don't like him, you know? Um, because a lot of people didn't like Obama, a lot of people didn't like Bush. It's going to happen, okay? And, and President Trump brings a lot of this on himself. So that's fine. But to call him a fascist, is intellectually dishonest. So when when you do this, guys, remember when in, in government class where we drew this circle for the political spectrum? Okay, here's your fence. Where's my fence sitters out here? There. The one is yeah, there he is. Pick your head up. Sorry. Let me get on your brother today. Okay, so you get to you get your left, right? You get your right. Down here you got your totalitarian, right? 
But you get your communists and your fascists. All right? This idea that fascism has to originate with the right or the right wing is a fallacy, in, especially according to Jonah Goldberg in his book. Okay. Now, let's look at some of what he says in it. Ronald Reagan comes out and says, the New Deal was fascism. You can imagine the media. You criticized FDR and called it fascism, the New Deal? How dare you? How can you say that? Okay, well, of course, Reagan backs it up, okay, with some facts. Now, when we look at the NRA, it fits, okay? I'm sorry, guys, but it, it, it kind of fits. FDR is extremely popular. The symbol is this blue eagle. Okay. Is there a crisis? Absolutely. Okay. What about the action? Look at all these programs that we've created since we started this class that you're going to have to memorize for the test. Okay. It's extraordinary. Okay. It fits. I'm not calling him a fascist. Okay. But the policies, especially this one, this one right here, the NRA, is fascistic. Okay. It just is. Okay. And that's not to say it's wrong. I'm not saying it's wrong. Okay? But let's call it what it is. It wasn't a dirty word then. It might be a dirty word today, but does it have to be a dirty word? If we're intelligent about it and we talk about it, does fascism have to be a dirty word? It doesn't mean Adolf Hitler. It doesn't mean Holocaust. Okay? It does mean a very strong government that is controlling the economy. Is it as bad as communism? I mean, you still have private property. It's just being controlled by government. <laughs> sometimes you need, you know, sometimes you need a little fascism maybe. When there is a crisis. Guys, it happens every time. We cede power to the executive during a crisis. It's happened throughout American history, throughout world history. They just didn't have a label. <laughs> okay? So if we look at this article, I, I'm, I put some stars by some stuff, and um, I, I, it's hard for me to tell you what paragraph I'm on, but um, as Goldberg makes abundantly clear, Fascism is a species of revolutionary socialism with totalitarian implication. implications. Vicious racism is not an inherent aspect of fascism. Though many American progressives, such as Woodrow Wilson, exhibited strong racist streaks, and Nazi fascism should be understood as an aberration peculiar to Germany. Mussolini, rather than Hitler, should be understood in, as the paradigm of fascism. Okay, so it's better to look at Mussolini to understand it. Um, okay, a couple of things. Woodrow Wilson. Uh, well, you guys understand what a progressive is. Um, liberals, yes. Progressives, somewhere in here near socialism. Okay, this is progressivism is using the government, excuse me, as a tool to create a better society. That's what progressives think you can use government as a tool to create a better society. Okay, and Wilson was one of those people that was a progressive. All right, I'm um, read from here. Most hysterical narratives portray World War I as the end of, the progress, of progressivism. Goldberg rightly sees it as its apothesis. With its propaganda efforts, its embrace of purifying effects of militarism, and ruthless crushing of dissent, Wilson openly argued for redefining the American constitutional order in Hegelian and Darwinian, Darwinian terms and celebrated the expansion of state power, 
Now, this is it. This is the way progressives feel. Expansion of state power necessary to direct human progress and guide people to mature freedom. So that a group of elites in Washington, D.C., progressives, that think they can direct society to a more mature freedom. Okay? This is... What's the word I'm looking for? Um, creating a, what is it, uh, social engineering. That's the word, the term, social engineering. Okay. Now, when we talk about social engineering, I go a little bit further. Wilson and other progressives disparaged individualism and the market economy and advocated for ever more powerful government, social and economic planning. It is here where we learned that Goldberg is not the first to use the category of liberal fascism. H.G. Wells used the term approvingly, not negatively, approvingly in 1932. He also said that progressives should seek to become enlightened Nazis. So what that means is, you know, fascism without the anti-Semitism, without the Jew hating. Okay, enlightened Nazis. All right, um... I looked up this guy, Waldo Frank. He's an author, a historian. Declared in 1934 that Roosevelt's NRA, National Recovery Administration, is the beginning of American fascism and that the Nazis expressed their admiration and enthusiasm for FDR's program. Hitler in particular praised American eugenics. Does everybody know what new eugenics are? Talk about social engineering. Okay, so there are certain people in the population, and the fact that you guys are all in an honors class means that you guys are pretty smart people. So we would want you people to reproduce and have lots of children because you're going to bear children that are smart, and that's good for the country. But some other people in society, you know, like drug addicts, uh, prostitutes, um, people with mental disabilities, physical disabilities, uh, birth defects. Uh, we don't want them to reproduce because then that makes our society weaker and those people are going to be dependent on the rest of us. This is eugenics, okay? Winfield State Hospital, about 40 miles straight south of here. In the 1920s, guys, they were performing forced castrations and hysterectomies of such people so that they could not reproduce. Right here in the good old USA. You could go to the state fair in the 1920s in Topeka, it used to be in Topeka, and you could enter your family into the contest for the fittest family in Kansas. Yes, you have the right hair color, facial construction, the right intelligence, the right fitness, you're the fittest family in Kansas. Guys, this stuff was not born in Nazi Germany. Okay, eugenics come around before all that. All right, we have a history it's not talked about a lot. And what has happened in the past tends to repeat itself. All you need is the right crisis. And this sort of thing will happen again. It's scary, okay? But when people are hungry and they can't get food, Bad things begin to happen. Just look at Venezuela right now. What's going on down there? Okay? There's a crisis down there. People are hungry. So, we want to avoid crisis. <laughs> okay? Uh, sorry. I felt like things got really intense there. Was that just me? <laughs> Yeah.
Okay. Now, I don't buy all of Goldberg's arguments here, okay? And I don't think that the guy that's reviewing the book does either. There are some points where he says, eh, he doesn't really connect all the dots, okay? Um, what else in here? The, yeah. Um, Perhaps Goldberg has rehabilitated fascism a bit too much. In hopes of blunting the visceral and unreflective but inevitable liberal rejection of his unwelcome parallels, this is people that think he's full of crap, Goldberg goes out of his way to offer exoneration to liberals by referencing their good intentions. On one hand, he makes clear the totalitarian temptation of liberal fascism Hillary Clinton's politics of meaning speech, for example, is in, in many respects the most thoroughly totalitarian conception of politics offered by a leading American political, political figure in the last half of the century. But he is quick to add that Hillary is no Fuhrer. Her notion of the common good doesn't involve racial purity or concentration camps. When I say that Hillary Clinton's ideas are in general fascist, I must again be clear that they are not evil. <laughs> and that's the point I'm making. And, I, and I'm not ready to call Hillary a fascist either. You know what I mean? I, I kind of disagree with him on, on this. I think some of you might as well. Um, so I want a uh, third to last paragraph. Goldberg thinks that extreme kinds of fascism that took root in Europe never caught on in America because of an anti-government or anti-statist strain deeply embedded in the American character. Americans don't like to be bossed around and would never tolerate Canadian-style health care rationing. <laughs> Yet a year after this was published, the Affordable Care Act became law. Yep. Now, it was not a universal system like Canada. I just thought it's kind of funny. Last paragraph. If there is ever a fascist takeover in America, Goldberg believes, it will not come from stormtroopers knocking down your doors, but with lawyers and social workers saying, I'm from the government, and I'm here to help. Okay. Any thoughts? <laughs> Guys, I just want the next time somebody throws out the epithet, that person is a fascist. The chances are that person you're speaking to has no idea what they're talking about. And it's your job to set them straight. Yeah, you can embarrass them. Sometimes you might even say that people that are the ones yelling somebody else is a fascist have fascist tendencies themselves. <laughs> like they want to shut you up and not allow you to have free speech. Thanks for one to know. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Uh, all right, a couple slides real quick, if you don't mind. I know. How much time we got? Five minutes, five minutes. <laughs> okay, you're behind. It's official. It's my talk on fascism. I'm sure I'll get lots of hits on that. Make sure you subscribe.